yards bigger. And then Brandon's off to the right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch my camera down. So if you're watching me on Zoom, this is my, uh, my bright and messy desk. This is the box that um, I ordered from uh, Brandon. And Brandon has a very interesting little pixel controller here. So um, I was excited. I started opening. I'm like, no, I'm going to do, do a live video. I'm going to open it. Uh, oh, look, he taped it really good, too. Look at that. So let's get her open here. And there's no surprises in here, are there, Brandon? I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. No, there shouldn't be any. Must the Postal Service throw it in? <laughs> All right. So PSA. We've got uh, we've got our invoice. This this um this Pixel controller is listed was listed at forty dollars. This is your first run, right? This is the first run of it. It is. Yep. So um, I don't mind being a a little tester for them but by all means uh i love doing this kind of stuff so um what do we have here brandon can you so there's uh the four pixel uh four string pixel controller that you've got in there um it's a daughter board that goes on top of a wt32 eth01 board it's a strange name. It's basically a ESP32 board that uh, has a Ethernet connection on it. And so uh, I made the discovery early on in the hobby that uh, Wi-Fi is nice to run your lights on Valentine's Day, but it doesn't work for a pixel show. So uh, I was very intrigued when the these uh, Ethernet controllers came out with the ESP32 chip on them, uh, all in one package. and. Uh, the folks at WLED uh, got this board working with their software. And uh, so for the last year, I had been doing a, a just a single port, basically uh, you run one string of lights. Um, a lot of it was just for me to use. And I thought, you know what, I'll put it on Tindy. Maybe someone else wants to use them. And uh, it, it, it's been fairly popular at least by my standards um but yeah just within the last few weeks i got the uh four port version working um i have a whole bunch more that are uh, about to hit the airplane and uh, head over to the u.s so if anybody else in the future is interested in it uh, they can do that um i went for simplicity uh there's uh you power the the board with uh, five volts and, and ground and then you've got four uh, terminal locks to connect your four pixel strings. Uh, my thought was that a lot of people are going to have a uh, power distribution uh, fuse block somewhere in their show. So I didn't run the power through the board. Um, to me, that could be a point of failure if you have a, any issues uh, or short. So I didn't want to you know, subject the board to that. And like I said, I, a lot of people are going to, you're going to power inject here and you're probably going to have a power distribution board hanging around or they're easy to come by. So, uh, I figured why not just do a board that will do data and then, uh, run the power, uh, as necessary, uh, on the side. So that's what you have there. Um, well, that's, and, and that was whenever I saw this, I, I saw that there were four outputs, which got me rather excited. It is smaller than the footprint of um, one of my one of the long-standing controllers that I've used for since ages since I started, uh, and that was the Sand Devices E6804. Um, let me see. No, it's over across the room there. Um, what what uh, the dimensions literally of this? Pretty sure I have a ruler here. Might not be able to see it, but um, I mean, I'm having a hard time seeing. There we go. About two inches wide there, by an inch and a half or so. Yep. And then the height is roughly inch and a half tall. So, well, with I guess it's like two and a half inches by two inches 
because you have to add in the length here for the uh, for the um, this is this is the cape. This is the daughter board, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we run these off of E131, and it runs off of WLED, and that's correct. Yes. Yes, it is correct. Yep. Oh, okay. And when it runs off of WLED, now for uh, for anybody who uh, doesn't know, WLED is another uh, firmware that yep. runs. Uh, RGB protocol, and uh, this will uh, can be set to 2811, which is what we're going to run uh, WS 2811 protocol. And uh, is it, this board is this a board that you created yourself here, the daughter board, or is that something that was all, already exists? So that one is the one that already existed. Mm -hmm. That one came out, I think, about a year and a half ago or so. Mm -hmm. Uh, at least I was made aware of it around that time frame, and uh, the the other board, the with the terminal blocks, is the the hat that I created that mm -hmm. uh, goes on top. Uh, it's got a level shifter, and then the terminal connections on it to uh, go to the pins of the WT32 board. Okay, good, good. So, so basically, the the two put together create one board. Now, so this the difference though is is that yours, you went out of your way to make sure that you could have four uh, outputs of data. Yes. And it doesn't want to go on. Is that because yes? Because I don't know how to line up the pins from far away. Yeah, there's 13 pins aside, and, and there's the 12 on the 12. Yep. Uh, I could have finagled it more, but one of them is an enable pin that doesn't do anything, and a, and a ground pin. And I figured there's a, yep. an, there was enough solder exposed anyway, so uh, the, the cape sits back just by one pin, just so it fits. So yeah, so there's that one pin, or uh, and you can pull that out if you yep. want. Put a little solder iron yep. and a you know, pliers. Yeah, and pull you could it out just right up, yep, bend it over and clip it. cut it, clip it off, and yeah. But there's that extra pin there. You don't hook into that one, so it sits behind. It sits directly behind the uh, uh, the uh, Ethernet jack that sits there. So um, the the thing that I was intrigued about was the fact that there were only two outputs or two connectors per output, and that was my initial seeing. So you posted the single output, single um, cape that went over top of this with only the one output, and I saw that and I'm like, ooh. That's a cool idea. Now, does that one have three outputs on it or just the two? Uh, so it has uh, power and ground in and then just the two uh, ground and uh, data out. Okay. Okay. So it's yes. so it's in and in and out. So in other words, it's still the same kind of setup as this where you have this is your input and then this is your output. So you still yep. you, you still keep it so that you um, – so that the person who's using this is going to have some sort of power distribution available to them. So that's great. I have, I have a bag of power distribution boards here that I've had for years, and I found that over the years I really didn't need to do any power injecting, not because um, I needed to or didn't want to. It was because I really didn't care to. It was extra work to me. So I decided a long time ago that I really didn't need power injection uh, unless I was doing something really crazy. But then I learned ways around not having to do it. And so I was stuck with a lot of these. So if, if you're out there and you need a power distribution board, they are available. Um, you can even go uh, – you can even go – and I'll pull one up here on Amazon. Uh, I got – what was it? What, what did we talk about earlier? We said um, – that you could literally use uh, a marine fuse box and I, I'll just share my screen real quick here one two screen number two so this uh, something like this is absolutely perfect to run this board that you have here so I mean 20 bucks here this is this is a, a boat fuse block and they probably have some sort of now you can you, you can regulate your own outputs these boards some of these boards can handle i don't know like 60 60 amps total per the whole board and you have what you know 12 outputs there so those 12 outputs uh, on one of these for 20 or 30 bucks or something i mean again i i don't have one of these so i mean i have 
I have plenty of these myself. So having one of those and one of these, if uh, it, there's forty dollars plus another twenty bucks, so that's sixty bucks that you literally can um, invest into it. Uh, but what I'm going to do, since um, since I kind of pre-set up a lot of the things that we're going to do tonight, just for time's sake, so that you don't have to see me fumble through a lot of stuff, um, I am going to uh, connect power only into the hat via the um, five volt power. Now, this only runs off of five volt power. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So you'll need to get a buck converter or something to uh, run it if you're running 12 volt pixels. Okay, so another three dollars on Amazon and away you go. Right. So so it's it's not really a huge deal. You're looking at uh, 40 bucks, 20 bucks for a power distribution board, you know, something like this, um, and then uh, another three bucks for a, for a, for a drop down, a voltage drop down. Uh, to get your five volts to run this because you're not running power out of the hat you're not running power off of this board you're literally running power from the distro board and uh i need to give me just a second here uh i i did it a little bit different yellow is hot because this is power and I don't have anything else set up like this. So power is yellow. And I'm just doing this so that I, because I don't have another, uh, um, everybody's going to say, oh my gosh, you're hooking up a pixel controller with like, like 20 gauge wire. Well, I'm not running pixels off of this hat with a, a pixel pigtail i'm running uh the electronics to this which only needs to sip like like a half an amp of five volt right <laughs> or, or something crazy like that yeah if even that right so, very small so so you could have you could have 20 gauge wire running from here um so the the other thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to run data from all of these over to our expansion or our uh, distro board right well we're not running it to this we're running we're running power off of power off of the uh, distro board for example i'll just take this out of here so because the other one's all connected with a bunch of stuff um so what we'll end up doing is we'll we'll designate and it doesn't matter which ones they are uh, it matters. What matters is uh, so you know which fuse blows if you happen to blow a fuse. But uh, I, I chose this one. This is one, two, three, and four. We'll say. So I just need to put these side by side and run the number one output data to the number one data on here, and that would be on the pigtail. It, it, again, uh, this is this is all demo. Like I haven't, I didn't open this until tonight. So. Uh, let me reach over here and grab this. So Russell, Russell likes my five volt. He's, he says it's his favorite. Perfect. Um, this is this is the power that I'm going to run back this way and on over to my desktop power. I'm not going to plug the power in just yet, but I want I want everybody to see that basically what I have here is this is this is a pigtail. Uh, it's a Raywoo pigtail. Um, it is hooked up uh, congruent with how my pixels are wired. Uh, your pixels may be wired differently, uh, but mine the hot is on the blue and the ground is on the brown. Um, and data obviously we always run with the yellow or mostly always run with the yellow. So this is number one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the number one, which is here. And so what do you what do you consider about the ground? Like you put a ground on there for a reason. What's the reason for how should how it's should we just, be thinking about the ground? It honestly, it's actually as long as you tie in ground from your power 
uh, it's just, as long as you're running the same ground, it's all the same ground, so you, you don't even need to use it. They were, it was easier to get two, uh, the, the two position terminal blocks than it was a single, and so, so it's there. So technically what you're doing, just data there, and as long as you're sharing the common ground from that same board to power the control board, you just need to bring the data back, and it's all using this, the common ground. So this is probably the uh, the most tedious part of the setup, which is you have to um, you have to have everything already doing the screw terminals. Yeah, which is why I did all this early before we uh, even be began. Because again, it it's all about the time that you spend doing stuff. So, um, but I want to demonstrate it at least. So this is one and two. And here is three. And obviously this isn't going to be like pretty neat because it's on my desk and we're just bench testing it. So um, you can imagine you can make this as neat and proper as you need to make it for your setup. Again, this is, you know, just, this is just a demo. Just a demo, folks. So show of hands in, in uh, the chat window or on your screen, uh, how many people have some of these spare distribution boards, power distribution boards just sitting around already and uh, have never used them or just have a bunch of them sitting there and you're like, I have no use for any of these, right? So I'm not going to cut this off. This is just a brown line that goes over to here and... Again, this is only powering, this is only going to power this board here. So this is output one, output two, one, two. This is output three, and this is output four. So one, two. Let's see if I can, can angle this a little bit better. And... How about I uh, tighten up? All right. That looks pretty good. Just double checking all my connections. Um, let me move this off to the top here. <coughs> okay, so just double checking all my connections. Um, I have voltage going to the unit from the power supply here, and this is 5 volt. I do I mark mine with 5 volt, 350 watt. Actually, this is probably like a 600 watt. I don't know. It, 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 it can run a lot of pixels. We're not going to run that many. And I'm going to connect it with yellow is negative, or yellow is hot, yellow is hot, and 5 volt is... Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think that's easier to go this way. Got those backwards. See, that would be bad. Go backwards and have them hooked up backwards. Do you have uh, reverse polarity protection on the board? Uh, I don't explicitly built in, but I have done the same thing, uh, and I can report that it uh, did not harm the board uh, over a short amount of time. For me to figure out, I was being a knucklehead. <laughs> so just just so you know, I've only been doing this for like, you know, like 
15 years and I still make mistakes. So that's why I'm double checking all my power connections. So uh, blue is positive, yellow is negative, blue is positive, yellow is negative. So we should be good there. We're connected with power. And then just to go back quickly over these, uh, on the left side is our left side is our ground and the right side is our positive. Well, the bl so my blue is positive on, in this case and my brown is my ground and I've done that on all four of my outputs. This is eight outputs so in theory I could have this board here, this board here and I could have my eight, eight outputs from one specific little uh, enclosure box. I don't have a a 16 output controller, a big board that's going to take up a lot of space in it. This is this is obviously going to take a little bit more wires, but logically you can follow it exactly where everything goes. So let's go ahead and um, we're plugging this in. Do we need to have our network cable plugged in first? Yes, plug the Ethernet cable in first. Uh, if you don't, WLED will create a Wi-Fi access point with the board and you can connect to it on your phone or your com computer, uh, but so e it will automatically either way. pull a DHCP address from your Ethernet if you have it plugged in first. So either way, we're, we're good. Either way, it doesn't matter if, if you don't have it plugged in. So I, I, what basically what I'm telling it now is I am telling it that I want it to pull from the wired network instead of my wireless network. But you could do it either way. I, I feel much more confident with, with it being wired. And I think many people are, are uh, in the same boat. There's a number of people who may, do it, who may want to do it. Uh, um, oh, you know what I didn't check? Did I hook these up correctly? That's wood is brown. That's iron. Wood is brown. Smooth is hot. Smooth is hot. Yep, we're good. So we've checked all our power. We have this going into my uh, switch that's behind the desk, which is a real short cord. And we should be able to plug it in. No magic smoke. No magic smoke. And there we go. So we see network action there. It's connected to the network. And so what's the first thing that we should be doing in the uh, computer right now? What, what do we need to look for? So you're going to need to find the uh, IP address of the controller. Uh, if you have WLED, the app on your phone, that's going to be the quickest way to do it. Uh, if you go into the, their app, then... Uh, uh, I don't have an app on my phone. Okay. Uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a guy with a desktop screen here that is going to bring up this, which I had before. Okay. And do I need to go to the WLED website, or do I just have? To, um, it's it's already been assigned. It's already been assigned. Yep. Okay. Yep. So you just need to find out what it is. So go into your router or the like I said, the WLED app if you have it on a phone. So I don't. Do it. I specifically don't have an app, but I do have this program called Advanced IP work. Scanner, and yep. um, I know that that is not my IP address. So let's go in and find. That's it'll show up as like an ESP. 32, if I recall, ESP something. But it is set up as static, or uh, as, uh, I'm sorry, dynamic. no, dynamic, excuse me. Yep. That's what I meant to say. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm running this one right now. I, again, I'm, I'm... Try that 88 at the very top. 88 at the top. Yeah, that, one, that one's not even showing. So dot eighty eight. There it is. There it is. First one. So, uh, from this screen, basically, this is uh, this is what WLED looks like. I haven't messed with WLED a lot. Um, what is the chances? And I, I know I asked this earlier, so I'm going to ask it again. Um, what are the chances that uh, Discovery works from X lights with this? 
My understanding is it should. The latest version, which is on there, is uh, version 13 of the WLAD software has the support for that. So I personally, I will admit that I was old school because I was getting props ready and I I set it up just the uh, the old way and did not use the virtualizer or discovery and X lights to do it. I just manually said, here you go. If we hit discover, hopefully it can find it and it doesn't seem to notice it. Yeah, it may not. So unfortunately, but that doesn't mean that we can't use it. So we already know the IP address. And to yep. do this, we just add um, an ethernet. Uh, now, is will this be under the vendor? Like, uh, w will we be able uh -huh. to use WLED for this, right? Yep, WLED, and then you can put the submodel as an ESP32 if you want. An ESP32. Or just the, the generic WLED there at the bottom. Uh, uh, okay. Yep. And oh, there it is, the variant. Okay. Yep. And so the generic ESP8266. You don't select that one and then ESP32. Oh, we'll, uh, so, the, right so we there. need to change this to so WLED, WLED, and then generic yep. ESP32. And uh -huh. so now we can give it our IP address, which we said was 192.168.1.1. And that should work. So we should we have our controller set up in here. Uh, we can give it, I don't know, uh, whatever, let's give it three universes. Well, yeah, that's about all we'll need. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Layout tab, and I'm going to create uh, four strings of 50 pixels, because that's what I've got. Um, four of them, bam, they should all be there now. Controllers, visualize, should be... I would assume that we're going to have to configure the outputs. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, you'll want to go to. Uh, I'm doing this on. Your... I'm doing this on the wrong screen too. By the way, son of a gun. <laughs> oh man, let me let me reshare my screen here. New share. No, we can see what you can. can what the... You can, but the screen capture can't. So we. So this can't be uploaded to the controller, and it programs it itself. I would try it. I. I... I thought you could. Okay, so what we're so, so what page is the outputs? So that if you want to configure the outputs, save it there and then go to LED preferences. And then you've got hardware set up. Right now it's configured for each of the, the pins, RGB and the length of the strings. I just defaulted it to ten. Uh, so you can so, change those there. Okay. No, don't change them. Don't change them, Clyde. Now try to push it for. Or just try to push it and see what happens. Yeah. If it changes it. Okay. We'll go ahead and bring X lights up. Okay. So it can see it. Let's go ahead and upload outputs. Uploading complete. Okay. Now just go over and refresh your page and see what. What we got 50 50 Perfect. 50 it is. and 50. Woohoo! So nice. that takes care of that. So the upload to controller works just fine. And now we should be able to output the lights. So we obviously have a connection. We obviously have our models set up. And the only thing we haven't done is connected our pixels. So let me do that real quick. Oh, I was just trying to see what colors it was outputting. Uh, it's a bunch of colors. Probably a mix of orange, red, green, and blue, I'm guessing. I I, I think I'd rather uh, do it here with X lights. So yep. we just do a new animation done. And output the lights. So as soon as we output the lights, as soon as it gets data, it turns it off. And yep. we can, um, there's, that's output one. That's the first strand. This should be this, we'll move that to the second strand. And the third strand, which should be one of these. We'll see it light up. There's the third strand. And there's the fourth strand. So, rather simple.
Rather simple. I'd say that was a little bit of setup just to get it going, but it, it's 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 all step by step. You can walk walk your way through it, and you can see kind of that. Um, it, it would be nice if discovery worked. I, I'm surprised it doesn't, um, because you already have WLED loaded onto the daughter board of this unit, right? Yes. Yeah. Which is surprising it didn't work. I I thought it would. So when you did the angry IP scanner, it didn't detect it as any kind of. Uh standard technology as a ESP or anything like that. I wonder if that has something to do with why discovery didn't pick it up. I'm sure there's probably like uh keywords that it's looking for. Might. Cause you know what I mean? Like if it's looking for every live IP, when you click discovery, it would show your laptops, your, your home lights, everything. It doesn't. So it has to be looking for key cues or something like that to, to pull that into discovery mode. Either it says FPP. I, I know FPP is always in the host. So I don't know if on WLED, there's like a host field or something like that that may be blank. And maybe that once you put WLED in there, it might encourage the discovery. I'm not, I'm not sure. That might do it. And, and there is a place to change the host name of the board in WLED settings. So we could come back in here and we could go to configuration. And where would we change that? Uh, either in a Wi-Fi setup or user interface. So we'll check Wi-Fi. Network. So this is set up. Uh, what is, Brandon, what's the max yeah. pixels per port on this? I just saw that from my room. So five, if you're running 40 frames per second, 500 uh, pixels per port. If you want to go uh, down to 20 frames per second, you can get up to about 800 pixels per port. So, so at, at minimum, uh, at maximum, 800 pixels total per port. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome for, yeah. uh, for a $40 pixel controller and a $10 power distribution board and or $20 power distribution board and a step down voltage and a couple power uh, pigtails and some wire and man you've got yourself a rather affordable controller that is easily hooked up I mean it's showing that the MDNS on it is WLED which I assume that would also be the host of it well that's for the uh, access point SSID let me look here. Uh, I think user interface, there used to be a place, yeah, uh, under user interface web setup, you can put server description, uh, and except I don't know if that populates, if that sends it out as a host name or not. Gotcha. The client name. If you set both the um, server description as well on the Wi-Fi setup, there was a NDNS name right there on that page. I think you just overlooked it. Okay. You mean on uh, where at? On go, go back. And then Wi-Fi setup. Mm -hmm. And over your mouse right below that net mask, where the net mask is, you see where it says 255, 255? Right below that, that HTTP, blah, blah, blah. That's going to be your NDNS address that you can put in there. So you change that as well as the server description on the um, user interface. I found if you set both of them, it seems to work pretty good. So are you saying make both of them the same and it works good? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, name my, I name mine based on the board, right? So like this is cabinet one, cabinet two, et cetera. Gotcha. And then they work in MDNS lookups and everything. So where would I go set that at? Where, where else am I gonna change? So go, ahead and set that, go ahead and set that. So you call it setup one, cool. Now go ahead and go up and save. Save and connect to the options. And then go back to the user setup when this page refreshes. Just gotta give it a second. Because it actually reconnects the network every time you make a change there. Now config. User interface. Then that top one where it says server description, go ahead and change that as well to be the same. 
server descriptions also what would show in the app if you had the WLED app on your phone. Okay, so now discovery should work? Discovery probably won't still pick it up, but that did set the host name to be that specific host name. I've been unsuccessful at getting discovery to ever find WLED. That's a shame. Discovery would be discovery would be awesome. But the, uh, again, though, um, you have a way you have a way to use um, to use some sort of IP scanner. Um, would would X X scan be able to pick this up? Maybe we should try that. X scanner should yes. Let me uh, let me pull out X scanner. Where's X scanner? I thought I had a shortcut on my desk. And just FYI, also in the developments. Um, fact on GitHub, WLED is limited to a maximum of 1,500 pixels total. So at this time, 1,500 so pixels. WLED supports 1,500 individual LEDs right now. Recommended maximum number is 750. So, and I believe that's per port. And I don't. I think that the documentation probably should be updated. The, the I know that uh, Quindor with his uh, digplot has uh, said that you can do uh, five hundred oh. to per port. Yeah, that, we tried to get seventeen hundred working on a gentleman's tree. We had seventeen hundred sixty on a tree, and mm -hmm. we could not get it going on one WLED. We had to down that, split it in half, and get two WLEDs going. Oh. Okay. So X scanner is anyway, yeah. X scanner is crashing on me. Yeah. So. So John Spiker wanted to know how to get this to work with Alexa. If you can go back to your WLED page, uh, Clyde. Yep. Now, if you go back to the home page, there should be something here. I think it is when you scroll down. I could be wrong here. Now go back to config, and I bet you it's on Wi-Fi settings. Uh, look in uh, sync. Interfaces. Sync interfaces yep. as your Alexa integrations under sync. Oh, okay. And then scroll down. Halfway down, Alexa voice assistant. So yep, all the way. Yep. Up, up, up. You went too far, Clyde. You said there all you the way right down. There. Right there. Alexa voice assistant emulate an Alexa device. Yep. So and those are the things you would give it there. And then you go into your Alexa app and you should be able to discover from there. There's some other, so it emulates a Philips Hue in Alexa, and there's a few settings um, that once you enable that, and it can turn on, off, and change color, but it can't set effects. So it can do um, on, off, but then you define a preset for your off to be all black, and define your preset to be on whatever you want, and then Alexa will go on, off, and then you can set a color. Alexa, change color to pink or something. I use WLED for cabinet lighting as well. Yep. So, um, so Brandon, based on, um, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and stop sharing and we can go full screen again with, um, there we go. Uh, so Brandon, as far as, as far as the controller goes, you're you're recommend you're saying it should have the ability to do roughly 500 pixels per output what um who who was who was mentioning that uh the the question or the question not questioning but was that uh ron ron you were saying um you were saying that it possibly is 1500 per board total total for the board i am printing it on his um wiki fact right now I'll, I'll post that link in chat mm -hmm. shortly here on um uh... man i can't i can't unpin myself rob did you pin me or something yeah what do you need me to do well i was gonna have i was gonna switch to brandon because we well i mean i can do this but I mean, basically, that's everything that, that I mean, that's really it. Um, we have we have a, a, a interesting, simple new pixel controller. It it does uh, by every every stretch that it works. Uh, there is nothing 
that it can't do with four outputs. I mean, at at the very least, having even if you just had fifteen hundred pixels, I mean, my gosh, fifteen hundred pixels from four outputs, that's certainly more than what most people put out of them. But if you were the kind of person that wanted to get the most out of it, it, it probably can do five hundred to, to eight hundred per output. But we'll we'll learn more about that as time goes on with WLED. I don't know much about WLED. It's always been um, one of those freaky things to me but but uh when ron whenever you started or i'm sorry brandon whenever you started um uh, when you started doing the uh the, the the uh build for this what was it what was your motivation for using wled and doing this board again uh this goes back to our simplicity i think it was something that was already out there it's open source it's uh quite good product and i wanted something originally that would run my house lights on valentine's day and then i could run a show uh, during time uh so that was also a motivation wled allowed me to do both uh very easily you've got the app interface um but yeah i was uh, i didn't really want to reinvent the wheel too much there's lots of great controllers out there i just wanted something that would be simple that you could set up uh, run pixels, interface with X lights, uh, and do a show. And also, again, make it economical for myself and anybody who wants to get one. Uh, and a side benefit, as, as I mentioned before we started this, was uh, you know in the day and age of component shortages, the fact that there's it is simple. Uh, it it's fairly easy right now. Anyway, I'll jinx myself by saying it, but to, to source parts because there's not a whole lot of stuff. There's the controller and then the daughter board, uh, which is mostly, uh, you know, headers and terminal blocks. So I, I think that I think the biggest um, uh, challenge for for a lot of folks is just in general, the pixel controller uh, usually is all it's all one piece or it's two pieces. And, and, and many people in the hobby are already used to a daughter board and a, and a hat. Um, where you combine the Raspberry Pi with with a Pi Cap, or uh, it's a Culp controller with a Beagle Bone, or it's a Beagle Bone with a uh, cape. For you know, we're 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 in the hobby are used to that, but we're also used to kind of being a little spoiled. And I think uh, having the the data on one board and separate is your output for power, and uh, on a second board, I think that's the one thing that most people are are probably like wow that's kind of weird and the the fact is is that this is actually a little bit more common than what most people would think and the reason i say that is because over time it was easy to get a bunch of data off of one board because the reason why you you can put more data onto a board the 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 reason why it costs a lot of, uh, in some instances, is because you have to add more components so that you can control the power from the board. So in many cases, a board like this can support, uh, it can be uh, created much less expensively because you're using a second uh, alternate power distribution power board that is already created and already available, and the components are not near as expensive to manufacture. So. Um, I like the fact that that you you've looked at it from this angle. Um, a, a handful of others have tried. Uh, I know, I know that uh, uh, another one of the hobbyists, uh, Darren, who uh, has the uh, art stick, he uh, he sent me one, and we I never got it running. We he, he it was a prototype, and it was a six output board, and he's like, well, you you can run a lot of pixels off of it, and it it'll probably run good, but I mean, it's not set up to run 500 pixels per output per six outputs. It could probably do it, no problem, but you'll never run that power through that board. There's no fuses, there's no, you know, and and I think that we have all been, um, we've been, what's the word, uh, 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 trained and, and and we've we've kind of gotten used to having power distribution on the board with the data. So I know John Spiker's out there in the audience, and John, um, if, you, if you would, uh, are, are you? I don't know if you're still there. If you're there, unmute your microphone. I'm here, Clay. Uh, so uh, you're the you're the type of person who has done this exactly what we're doing right now. Like you're 
one of the experts that can set up and do a, a, a distributed type setup. Um, is this something that you find would, would be simple to implement in the way you are already doing things? Yeah, it'd be very simple. I mean, it's a little different thinking for most people because they think of the board with power. But this also actually gives you a lot more options in the fact that you control your power and the safety of it by being able to distribute it through your distro board. I mean, there's a lot of advantages to this. I know Chris in the comments has been saying the same thing, is that we've been doing this since day one. I, um, I, again, I started out uh, whenever, whenever I started with um, uh, RGB and stuff and years ago, and I, somebody gave me a distribution, well, didn't, I, I bought one. Actually, I bought, uh, like I showed earlier tonight, I showed uh, one of those uh, marine uh, fuse boxes. I bought, I bought three of those. One of them I opened, the other two are still new in the box out in the workshop. And I've never used them, but this gives me a good excuse to put, uh, and I, I remember, I mean, I can put 10 amps on one output. Uh, some of our distribution boards, some of these are only, you know, and, and even the controllers are only rated for, for 5 amps for your, for your max fuse. So that, that really opens up your opportunity. John, whenever you look at your, your distribution, how, how much do you typically put on one output from your distribution? I try to stay within this regulated limit, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. And if that means I need multiple distribution boards, because I'm going to be running way over the capacity of one distribution board, I spread the load accordingly. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah, you, you're do you're still, you still consider balanced as the best approach? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like, for example, you're running five volt there, you know, if you're going to run, you know, eight, 10 amps through a connector that's only regulated for five amps, it's, it's not very safe. Mm -hmm. So balance it based upon what you're connecting to. So, so I, I do see this as a big thing um, for those people who, because everybody knows there's always people who want to maximize every single bit of the board that you possibly can. If I can get 10 more pixels out of that output, I'm going to do that. And um, there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, Ron just sent in chat, what is this, a WLED scanner. Sorry, I was muted. That's just an example. Since your X scanner was crashing, mm -hmm. I just screenshotted um, an X scanner discovery of a WLED controller. So that everyone who's interested can see what it looks like if you ran X scanner, since unfortunately your X scanner was crashing, you couldn't see it. So, where did that save to? There it is. So, I'll put it on my screen so that people can see it. Yeah. Oops. So it discovers it as what model it is that's defined and how many pixels, and actually shows it as a WLED device. So, so you should go ahead. I was going to say, Cloud, I can show a real world example of this controller, but using a smart receiver on that same powering perspective. By, by all means, go right ahead. Can you see my screen? Yep. So imagine this as Brandon's controller, mm -hmm. where the data is coming off of a receiver board. Ignore the zip tie in my mid season haste to fix something, but you can see that the power and ground is coming off the board that's designed for 60 amps, whereas just the data is coming off of the actual board, very similar to Brandon's board that you're seeing today. The key is making sure your grounds are tied together, so you have the, the ground reference point, um, but beyond that, there is no difference except for this network cable is not coming off of, you know, an F48 or whatever. It's an actual controller. Is that true, Brandon? Yes, that is correct. So very similar setup. Yep. Yeah. So when I first saw this picture, I was like, oh, what, 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 a, what a horrible waste of a, of a uh, expansion board for a V2. And then I thought, no, John sold all his. <laughs> And then whenever I saw what he was doing, I'm like, oh, what a great idea. So, so John could literally take and plug in, you know, what is that? One, two, three, four of, of your, of your uh, small controller hubs 
and that literally could run pretty much a lot of outputs there. I mean, yeah. there's there really is no limit to what what you can uh, accomplish with. I mean, especially if you have two power supplies and you have um, two power supplies, sixteen outputs. I mean, it 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 is in every right just like having a standard Pixel controller. The only difference is going to be what that you know your the power that you're using is uh, uh, the power that you're using is is distributed as opposed to connect coming from the board. So. Well, I, does anybody have any questions? I'll go ahead and open this up to everybody. Um, uh, I guess a, a good question to start with is where do we get one of these boards at? What's the website that uh, that we're going to get this from? So currently, I'm selling on Tindy, uh, tindy.com. And if you go there and just search for Wasatch Pixels, which is my little store name, uh, I'll add a link there. Or you can do that. Tindy.com. Yeah, please please share a link in chat yep. for anybody. I uh, will search project. Just search Wasatch, W-A-S-A-T-C-H. So there's Wasatch Pixels as your second choice there. And then that brings up my store. And uh, there's the quad board and uh, the single board. So the, this is the board that we, there. this is what we were messing with today. That's what we have here in the uh, on the desk. Yep. And uh, I'm... I'm I'm rather happy with it. I mean, if if uh, connecting this in and running this with my show, it, it, so for an example, Pixel controllers are hard to get a hold of. I mean, you provided that you're home and you're not slammed with a million things to do, you're able to you know hopefully pop one of these in the mail within a day or so of getting the order and sending it out. Yep. I got it in a couple of days, and um, you know being able to tonight i mean literally open the box in front of everybody and you know less than an hour and we were we were taking our time with it too so uh the video of the setting this up is going to be we'll post it on uh, it'll be on youtube uh so everybody can have a chance if if that way that way brandon you've just answered like a half half of the questions that people are going to have and then me stammering around because you know i don't know anything about wled uh, it's good to have a couple other resources of people here to point me in the right direction. But at the same time, uh, 40 bucks for one one controller cape, and it includes the daughter board, and it is literally ready to go. So you said you're going to have more of these when? Uh, so the start of next week, I should have another batch, and then there's a, another batch following the after that. So they are about ready to get loaded on the airplane. I've been staring at the uh, shipping uh, thing from uh, Shenzhen. So uh, next week, check back some, and uh, I will uh, continue to keep them in stock. So this is this is what initially caught my attention. Uh, I saw an Ethernet controller with one output, and I got excited. And this is what this is what was posted, what you posted in the vendor group. And this is just anything one output is uh, incredibly helpful for remote items uh, for something that's just a little bit further away. Now, we said earlier that you could run this from wireless. As long as it's set up wirelessly with the network, you could you could run this off of the wireless network on in your show. Uh, we didn't set it up that way, but it's available. So this can also run off of a wireless network in your show. Uh, so running it remote is a great idea. Now, this is this is built similar to, this, to the other one. Any differences to this? Uh, just the number of outputs. Uh, everything else is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, we just uh, took that design and then uh, support in WLED came for multiple outputs and multiple pins. Uh, and so we have the quad board now uh, that's uh, in work. So uh, or getting ready to be shipped. Is, is is four outputs the maximum that it can do, or is four outputs the maximum that the daughter board is capable of pushing? Uh, yeah, yes and yes. The daughter board does four. I believe you can expand out one or two more pins, um, and that'll be something for me to experiment with and, mm -hmm. and get a more concrete idea about pixel counts and so forth. But right now, four outputs. The This particular controller, the WT32 controller, 
uh, has to take some of the pins and uh, use that for the ethernet. So you're limited on total number of pins available for data. I see. So, so in other words, um, so in other words, the board uses up so many available lines for data that it can only like four is the biggest you can get it to go. Well, and like I said, I think that I'll have to do some more testing mm -hmm. and development, but I, uh, I believe there's one or two more pins that I can use. Uh, you just have to, I have to be careful just not to double up on use pins that are being needed for the ethernet connector. Right, 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 right. Now, you have another version that you're thinking of coming out with, Brandon, that will have the the power in the board and maybe even like a buck converter to step it down by volt in that, or is that not? not I've, I've batted back and forth that. Um, I started going down that road and then I'm getting components and regulators and buck converters. I, it just, it was more problematic for me to try to source something that was reliable to incorporate in the board. So I, I think I'm going to stick to this for right now and, and maybe down the road when uh, components are more readily available and it wouldn't be a hang up. I didn't want to have a buck converter or a regulator be, you know, the reason why I couldn't get a board produced uh, in a timely manner. So, so is this, is this considered um, the bare bone, uh, the bare bone needed to output what we did today? Yeah. This is so. This would be the bare no, bones. Yep. No more than what you need. It it will do what you need it to do, and the likelihood or ability to get these produced is much more um, available. It's much more. It, it it's much easier to get your hands on something like this. Yep. So and uh, I I have a surface mount versions are are coming down the pipe, which helps uh, increase the availability of components. I can either, if the you run out of uh, level shifters that are through hole, you can use the surface mount and vice versa. So I will have stock of both and uh, plenty of chips to go on them. So hopefully hedge my bets with uh, chip shortage at least. So what is this LED controller multiplex? So I, th I've been waiting, I've been waiting to yeah. see this. That's a, I, Again, it was the same problem. I finished my Pixel show, and I'm like, now I want to turn my lights on for Valentine's Day, and then St. Patrick's Day is coming up, and then Eastern, 4th of July. Um, and I know you can do it with X lights, but, you know, just an app, and maybe the wife wants to just go to the app. So if you take this uh, multiplexer board and you have a Colt or a Falcon or uh, any of those controllers, you take the uh, output of, say, your... Uh, your show controller and you bring that into uh, the day one of the the two terminal data connections input then you take a little WLED controller it can be a three dollar um, Wemos controller or one of the these uh, just wirelessly or or however you want to control the data but you take that and bring that in with a relay pin from WLED and then when I turn on WLED, the multiplexer will use the WLED board and I'll put that to my lights. Uh, if I turn WLED off, uh, the relay turns it off and it will output my Falcon or my Culp or whatever controller I have uh, to the lights. So, so, so it, you're not disconnecting it from the network. You're adding, exactly. you're adding this um, side by side with your network as a second way to get send data out to your controllers and you you're outputting data from something you know like uh, like WLED as opposed to X lights yep yep you can what well, your output of your string up there and then you can have two different boards to choose from to output to your lights so it was just easier so then I wasn't in the garage pulling wires out and disconnecting one controller, putting another controller in, and I, I just wired it in once with this board, and uh, then it'll just happen. Okay, so you put this in chat. This is uh, an example of another power distribution board. Um, yeah, just an example, yeah. This is, this is crazy because uh, these things were, were, weren't even a blip on the radar seven years ago. There, you couldn't you you couldn't buy something like this seven years ago, 
and now now you can get something like this on Amazon. That's just crazy to me. So if you don't have a power distro board, you can you can buy this one and this is how many outputs? What is that? 10 position, you know. 5 to 32 volt uh 5 amp fuses on there. Yeah, that works. And I think the whole board itself, uh, it's, does it say down there it's, was it 30 amps total or 40 amps? Maybe there was another one that was similar that did, I think it was 40 amps Four, total. Total current, ra current rating is 40. Yeah, 40 amps total. So it's not 50 amps, it's 40 amps is the max, even though you have but you're probably if you're if you're like me well, I, if you're like me you're just going to put out what one output's going to be and, and you're not going to worry about power injection so you'll just keep going but uh, you have that option too so um no very 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 cool very cool um what else did you pop into chat there uh there was just uh, that was an article on a maximum amount of LEDs per port. Um, he goes into the FPS and so forth, frame rates and all that. Uh, that was where I was coming up, this article of the 500 pixels, mm. but it uh, seems like real world, maybe it's less. And again, I need to so, test it. And, yeah, so so you really haven't gone through and, and uh, run between five to 600 per, per maximum per output. Um, and that's what that says there. So, uh, I mean, even still, even still, 500 pixels per output is is significant, right? It's not a small number, and yeah. and it's it, it's let uh, if for the uh, for the people in the audience uh, who are listening, you, by all means, you can unmute and share your experience with how many pixels. But I, I don't know what what's the average that somebody puts on an output out there that you really need to make sure that you have coverage for. If somebody wants to share, two hundred. Rob's like two hundred. <laughs> More than I'd like to admit. More. Good answer, Rob. I with WLED, I've seen people do five to five fifty per port um, on WLED. It's just like you might get five hundred, five hundred, and then two hundred, right? So um, just the the ZSP thirty twos just don't have a tremendous amount of processing power, but they're very, very, very useful. Yeah, I was reading the GitHub notes that you posted, Ron, and it sounds like there's some kind of limitation to output three once you split them. And it okay. says, like, you can do, like, 500, 500. Three will give you issues, but four you can do 500. So there's something with three in the buffering, it says. Yeah, it also it's depends on what pin number you use because some pins are driven by DMA. So then it starts getting into different kind of bit bang on DMA, right? But Gotcha. But they're still very useful. I use them for interior trees. I use them for cabinet lighting. I use them for a lot of distributed small prop kind of usage. I love the idea. I think it's I think it's terrific. And if if it, it if it can it get kicked up a notch with you know maybe another output or two have five ten outputs. I mean you you're just looking at a a very it's like a no brainer. It, it really it becomes a no brainer once once you know that you can uh, connect to it. You can find the IP address. You can assign it. You can go static with it because WLED allows you to do that. You you can add it into X X lights and and you know go from there. Upload the controller. Um, I mean there there really is a lot of potential with this technology now. Uh, so I'm rather excited. I, I'm glad that I'm glad that we uh, we're 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 in a time where this right now is hard to get a hold of. And but not that this is get hard to get a hold of. What we really what what we've what we've grown accustomed to, and the other nice thing is is that this is just another option for us to keep moving forward and still make our plans and and be able to uh, continue doing cool stuff on our shows. So huge thank you, Brandon. Anybody have any questions for for Brandon? Anybody have anything they want to bring up before we uh, we call it quits for the night? No, but I do have some feedback, Brandon. This yeah. was, was a very cool idea and actually very much intrigued myself. I did post in the comments because I saw in your hand that you had like a two-port version. If there's, you know, any 
plans for you know different variations of it i'd be interested to to see what you come up with yeah so uh, the, it's gone from the single port to the four port and the four port's brand new like i said the first run went out and uh, clyde got a, a couple of those uh and then uh, we'll get it on its way and then uh, work on maybe see if we can add some more ports to it make it a six port or something if the port does uh, uh, and then yeah, again, down the road, I might look at doing some power going through it, a buck converter or some sort like that. But again, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. And and with the component shortage, I thought well, I'm going to keep it simple for right now and uh, go with what I know is, is readily available. And and uh, so hopefully we can continue to add some features and I appreciate anybody's feedback and we'll uh, try to incorporate it as we go. No, I, I will say my feedback is, is, you know, incorporating power, of course, is going to broaden your scope of the available clients that you have. But I think one of the advantages that you have that is above and beyond, say, the pie caps of the world that we have today is your integration with Amazon and families makes it a lot cleaner, a lot easier. I, I know this last season, even though I've had buy inside tree with pixels for many, many, many years. My wife got really annoyed with me when she would go, Alexa, turn the tree on, and then she would have to wait. And it would wait till, you know, FPP booted, and then the, the scheduler kicked on, and then her sequence, quote unquote, would play. But she would get annoyed by the three to four minute wait that it took, where if something like this would be kind of cool for or even, you know, Alexa, turn on Valentine's Day, or whatever your keywords were associated to it to your use case that you used it for would be very cool. Yeah, for sure. It, uh, yeah, you add the input of your family and let them go ahead and play with the lights and the display on the house. I absolutely love it. Love the idea. All right. Is it possible to have an external antenna attached to it? Uh, so I saw it in chat. Uh, no, there's not on this WT32 board. Uh, for Wi-Fi, uh, it, it's not. It does not support that. Okay. So the voltage that it needs to run is five volts, or would three volts be a, okay? I'll have to test it with three to see if the board would run. And my guess is it would. Uh, that'll be tonight's project, and uh, maybe I can reply on Facebook or somewhere what what it does, but. The board natively runs 3.3 .3 volts on the pin output, so uh, probably should, for VCC, it would probably work. Yeah, the, the only reason I was curious about that is because I know they have, like, those Arduino uh, three-pin uh, buck converters that are usually, you can buy on Amazon, stuff like that. And I was just wondering maybe if there was almost like a way that you could put some kind of jumper in there. That's like a three seat jumper that runs di just direct five volt. But if they wanted the 12 volt option, they would just buy one of those buck converters off of Amazon or what have you to slot to replace the, the regular jumper in there. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah, it does. No, that would be cool. Yeah. And, and then it's not really that much more you're adding to the board. And then if they wanted it, you would have that, you know, I think those buck converters are like a voltage in voltage out and ground type thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think you get like 20 of them. Well, hold on. <laughs> but you get a whole bunch for like 10 bucks. You get like 12 or 15. Just depends on which. Yeah, you get like you get. of them for like $9. So maybe it's even something you could even sell on your website then too, individually then at that point. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, I can I'll look into that. Maybe a little add on. Yep, just a thought. So that uh, all, all good. Um, anybody else have any other Anything else that they have a question about? Uh, Claude, I just want to uh, run in a quick question. Is, is there any difference really between your controller and like the Dig Quad that Dr. Z's uh, sells? I mean, I'm all for additional controllers in the market. I was just kind of curious. Yeah, so the main difference is uh, the Dig Quad has power running through his board, and this board is just data only. And so okay. you need to get the extra power distro board. all right that makes sense perfect I, I missed the first part so i'm sorry if you covered that no, no worries no I, I i'm it's it's good to, it's good to bring that up because um i mean 
if if you're if you're just joining now and you're you're like, what's going on? What are they doing? This is this is the controller we've been talking about, and it is. Um, Rob, can you pin me? Um, this is this is the board we've been talking about. It runs off of uh, Ethernet. It, um, or maybe I can pin me. There we go. Uh, here it is. Here's here's the board we're talking about. It it does not have onboard data. Uh, it ha or it does not have onboard power. So you're only powering the ha uh, the hat or the cape with 5 volt and then, and now that's why we're running off of off of the screen here this is a 5 volt power supply these are 5 volt pixels now you can run 12 volt pixels but the hat doesn't care as long as it gets 5 volts this is the hat runs off of the 5 volts which which then feeds the daughter board um, then what we'll, we're using is we're using a distributed uh, uh, power form that we connect data. Uh, we don't connect data to this. So this is basically this is our this is our data here, and then this is our power distribution here. And between these two, we we were able to mock up something rather. It it looks sitting on a desk. It doesn't look very neat and organized, but it is it is rather simplistic, in the fact that power is only coming from one board and data is only coming from another board and you're just connecting up your uh, outputs in such a manner. The, the, I think the hard part for some folks is going to be that they need to have longer um, pigtails to, to reach out of their controller or a, possibly a bus bar that they connect from here that goes out to beside the, the power distribution we'll say where those three connections can be made all close together. But uh, this is basically the setup, and um, it was rather easy. Uh, uh, Brandon sets these up. He presets all of these in, uh, controllers up with WLED. It automatically, whenever you connect to a wired network, it will automatically be uh, assigned a, uh, uh, um, an IP address thanks to it being uh, not uh, not set to, there's no static uh, IP addresses it's gonna it's gonna be dynamic so your router will will tell it what it is uh, or and we didn't set it up this way but we didn't we didn't go through the wire wireless uh, setup the wireless setup will uh, look it will open up a what was it what did you say it would open up a, um, a Wi-Fi connection that you connect to Brandon Yep, it creates its own access point, right. and then you connect to it and go in and change settings. Yep, and then and then at that point you can assign it a static IP address, whatever you want it to be. So, uh, correct. So uh, this is this is a little bit odd. Again, this is a little bit more odd than what uh, we're used to doing. We're we're kind of spoiled because we have we've had for years uh, five. Uh, we've had five volt, twelve volt controller cards that you you know you directly pl power into, and and to have something distributed being uh, uh, available available is the key. Uh, the other thing I'll say is uh, this is with a little bit of practice. This is rather easy. It's he's already got the firmware set up on it for you. You plug it into the network. You know, as long as as long as your router assigns it an IP address, you can go and find the IP using some IP f scanner. Uh, X scanner will should have no problem finding it, and you're you're good to go. Uh, I I think this is a, a viable option for all of everybody who's out there looking for a Pixel controller. Once uh, Brandon gets these back in, I think uh, he's not going to have them for very long. So, uh, and and but but again, Brandon, you said that uh, you would have um, you would have a uh, uh, another. Um, series coming in and you said it'd be over the next few weeks you'd have them coming in next yeah week. I, I do i have two series coming in uh, the next one hopefully first part end of this week first part of next week and then another series uh, shortly thereafter awesome 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 well i appreciate you taking the time i mean i i know you're typically not a facebook person so uh uh and and that's not a bad thing you probably have a much simpler life than the rest of us um <laughs> Oh, uh, and it's hit and miss too. My my day job doesn't allow me to have network connectivity as an airline pilot, so uh, I have to turn the phones off periodically. Ah, so you're fl you're busy flying around the country. Gotcha. Um, and uh, well, I, I mean, let's let's face it. Um, uh, 
if if you're if you're into the hobby and 40 bucks is 40 bucks and if you have power distribution boards again there are a couple people that had their hands up earlier 40 bucks plus a $20 board off of Amazon we can get them rather cheap uh they're already ready um you can have them at your house in two days. When he gets these in, if if you check them out, I, I, I do recommend checking them out because it seems like after, I'm going to play with it a lot more. I'm going to probably build these two into one enclosure, use one of my one of my distro boards, and uh, and get get something set up so that uh, so that I can run two of these for my show this year. I mean, it, there's there's never a reason to not have a spare controller, and I think especially now, this is the time to get it. So. If you can get it and it's easy to set up, I don't see a reason why uh, you wouldn't choose to get one. So, anybody else have anything for Brandon? Any questions for Brandon? Um, you just, Clyde, you actually hit a keyword for me. I was trying to think of how to describe this, but a bus bar of some sorts, whether purchased or found or, you know, designed and built, I think would help clean up the wiring. Mm hmm. So that you can plug the, you know, wire the, the, the pigtails right into the bus board and then bring your power and data from the separate sources to the bus bar. I think that'll make a cleaner install. I, uh, well, yeah. Box. I mean, yep. it's hard it's hard to do this on a desk, number one. Yeah. And and to mock it up so that I can tear it apart and put it away. Um, right. But, but just like anybody else would say, you can always build the nicest build. And you can set it up so that it is in a way that you prefer it. Now, none of us, none of us have visitors that come in, at least I don't, I've never seen anybody tell me, not once, that I'm, <laughs> I'm, let me, let my viewers come up and look inside my enclosure boxes and let them tell me how nice they look. Now, I, over time, I appreciate the fact that I took time and I made them neat and it helped me whenever I had a problem. Uh, and that's, that's why it might be important to have everything organized and neat. But, in the real world, I've never had one person no. open up one of my enclosures and say, "Man, look at that rasness in there," because <laughs> because they can they can be kind of. I mean, let's face it, uh, we we live in some pretty pretty challenging times as far as you can't get. Uh, what are they? CG fifteen hundreds. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so the hard part is, what enclosure do you buy? And how, and I mean, for goodness sakes, now you need an enclosure. If you get a nine by nine, which you can get the nine by nines, the CG one 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 thousands will fit two of these: a distro board and a, 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 a three hundred fifty watt twelve volt power supply. It'll fit it, and and you can have eight outputs out of it. So I think that that's I, I mean, that it's a no brainer. You can keep building, or I mean, if you wanna if you wanna do the what is it the um, uh, the Harbor Freight uh, ammo right. boxes. I mean, ammo boxes. You can bud boxes. There's options for for doing this stuff. I I think I think once now Chris because Chris is in in a 3D printing group, um, and I like to 3D print stuff. I'm that that'll be one of the first things that everybody starts saying is I I need to, I need 3D printed uh, brackets to hold these so that you know I can yeah. you know that's I think that's the first the the first step for some of us because you know. But other than that, other than that, I I, I think this is a, a a nice little setup that that everybody could everybody everybody can get a forty dollar pixel controller. Everybody can. I mean, and, and play and have fun with it and figure out the wireless. And how many people have have Alexa and Amazon? I'm I'm trying to get my Amazon Echo in here. You know, <laughs> um, everybody has one of these. And how many times have you wanted to do something and say, you know, uh. Echo, please turn turn on turn on my Christmas lights. You know now you can do that. You know or turn on turn on Valentine's Day lights. You know to to or or even cabinet lights or mm -hmm. you know.